Good day, science wizard. It's another day for us to explore the magic of science. By the way, I'm Danilo Tatat Dordelis and welcome to Genetics. In this video, I'm going to show to you the simulation of stages of the cell division. But before that, let us define first what is a cell division. A cell division is the process by which cells multiply involving both nuclear and cytosplasmic division. There are two types of cell division. The first is mitosis and the second is meiosis. So now that you know what is a cell division and the different types of cell division, so let's now begin by discussing the mitotic cell division. Mitosis is a nuclear division that results in two new nuclei, each having the same number of chromosomes as the original nucleus. The parent cell is the cells that divides, and the resulting cells are called daughter cells. It occurs in all somatic cells and in sex cells after fertilization. In multicellular organisms, mitosis is a means of increasing the number of cells and replacing worn out tissues. However, in plants, for instance, the roots continue to grow as they search for water and nutrients, wherein this region of growth are undergoing mitosis. Consider this as the animal cell having a nucleus. This is the nuclear membrane and this is the nucleolus. And this one is the centrioles that are found near the nucleus, which is responsible for the formation of the spindle fibers during cell division. We all know that mitosis is divided into four recognizable stages. First is propase. In propase, the chromatin in the nucleus begins to condense and becomes visible as the chromosomes composed of two sister chromatids that are pinched together at the site of the centromere. Special proteins attach to the centromere to form kinetochore. Finally, the nuclear membrane disintegrates and the nucleolus disappears. Centrioles begin moving to opposite ends of the cell, and fiber extend from the centromeres. Some fibers cross the cell to form the mitotic spindle. Now the cell will proceed to the second phase of mitosis, which is the metaphase. By the end of the prophase, the spindle fibers align the chromosomes along the middle of the cell nucleus by their centromere. This line is referred to as the metaphase plate. During this stage, the sister chromatids appear to repel each other forming the familiar X shape of a chromosome. This organization helps to ensure that in the next phase, when the chromosomes are separated, each new nuclei will receive one copy of each chromosome. This is the metaphase plate, then it will now proceed to anaphase. In anaphase, enzymes break down the proteins in the centromeres, allowing the two chromatids to separate. Once the chromatids separate, they are considered to be individual chromosomes. The paired chromosomes separate at the kinetochores and move to opposite sides of the cell. Motion results from the combination of kinetochore movement along the spindle microtubules and through the physical interaction of polar microtubules. Then the cell will proceed to the last phase of mitosis, which is telophase. In telophase, when the chromatids reach the opposite poles of cell, a new nucleus begins to reform around the chromosomes forming two daughter nuclei. Inside the nuclei, the chromosomes begin to uncoil and the nucleoli reappear. Outside in the cytoplasm, the mitotic spindle disappears, leaving the centrosome just outside the nuclear membranes. The chromosomes disperse and are no longer visible under the light microscope. The spindle fibers disappear and the cytokinesis or the partitioning of the cell may also begin during this stage. Once the nuclear membrane has reformed around the nucleus, the mitosis is complete. Finally, these are now the two identical daughter cells, which are haploid. This is the cell 1 and this is the cell 2. So, that's a cell division called mitosis. The next is, I'm going to show to you the cell division called meiosis. But before that, what is meiosis by the way? Meiosis occurs in eukaryotic organisms that reproduce sexually. This includes plants and animals. Meiosis is a two-part cell division process that produces sex cells with one half the numbers of chromosomes as the parent cell. There are two stages or phases of meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, wherein at the end of the meiotic process, 
four daughter cells are produced. However, before a dividing cell enters meiosis, it undergoes a period of growth called interphase. Interphase is divided into three phases. The first is the G1 phase. This is the longest phase of interphase. In this phase, the cell increases in mass in preparation for cell division. The duration of this phase is varied depending on the kind of cell, its location, and function. In embryonic tissues, cells increase in volume by imbibing water and nutrients. The second is the S phase. This is considered as the most critical and significant phase because this is the period during which DNA is synthesized. Note that the S represents synthesis. And the third phase is the G2 phase. The period between the completion of DNA synthesis and the start of active mitosis with many internal chemical changes in the cell. Cell synthesizes proteins and continues to increase in size. The duration between S and G2 space variable depending on the cell, but both are shorter than G1 and are usually measured in hours. Keep in mind that before meiosis begins at all, the DNA undergoes replication just like it did before mitosis started. So when you first see chromosomes in meiosis 1, they have sister chromatids just like in mitosis. It is just that in meiosis 1, we will be talking about tetrads becoming visible, lining up, separating, and decondensing, rather than chromosomes like in mitosis. Finally, cytokinesis occurs too, anytime after the tetrads have moved out of the equator, just like in mitosis. In prophase 1, just like in mitosis during prophase, DNA condensation occurs, the nuclear envelope and the nucleal disappear, and the spindle starts to form. The big difference is what is going on the chromosomes themselves. As DNA condensation proceeds and the chromosome first become visible, they are visible as tetrads, so tetrads become visible during prophase. Meiosis 1 begins with the condensation of chromosomes and the leptotin during prophase 1. During the pachytin, another stage of prophase 1, the pairs of homologous chromosomes align to form tetrads in a process called synapses. Corresponding segments of DNA of sister chromatids of two homologous chromosomes twist and cross forming so-called chasmata. In these regions, exchange of DNA between homologous chromosomes can occur, crossing over. Crossing over requires that the chromosomes break and reconnect to the other chromosomes. After the crossing over, it will now go to the metaphase 1. In metaphase 1, tetrads line up at the equator. The spindle has is completely formed. It is during my prophase 1 and metaphase 1 that genetic recombination is occurring. Keep in mind that it only happens when there are tetrads. So as soon as anaphase 1 get going, genetic recombination is over. In anaphase 1, the tetrads pull apart and chromosomes with two chromatids move towards the poles. Now it will proceed to telophase 1. In telophase 1, the chromosomes with two chromatids decondense and a nuclear envelope reforms around them. Each nucleus is now haploid. Keep in mind that it is not the number of chromatids per chromosome that determine whether a cell is diploid or haploid, but it is the number of chromosomes and whether they are paired that determines this. At the end of meiosis 1, each chromosome still had two chromatids. That is double the amount of DNA that a cell should have. So the entire reason to go through meiosis 2 is to reduce the amount of DNA back to normal basically to split the chromosome so that each daughter cell has only one chromatid per chromosome which is the normal genetic content. You can notice that it is really similar to mitosis however keep in mind that the only difference is that the two chromatids per chromosomes are not necessarily identical due to genetic recombination occurs in meiosis 1. Hence, these two daughter cells will undergo meiosis 2. In prophase 2, 
the chromosomes with two chromatids become visible as they condense, and the nuclear envelope and the nucleolide disappear, and the spindle is forming. Now the cell will proceed to metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes with two chromatids line up at the equator. The spindle is fully formed. Although genetic recombination primarily occurs during meiosis 1, but the way the chromosomes line up during metaphase 2 can help also to make unique daughter cells. Now, the cell will proceed to anaphase 2. In anaphase 2, the chromosome is split so that a chromosome with only one chromatid heads toward its pool. Now, the cell will proceed to the telophase 2. In telophase 2, the chromosome with only one chromatid condensed and gets surrounded by new nuclear envelopes. The four daughter cells are now all haploid and have the right amount of DNA. They are ready to develop into sperm or eggs now. So, this simulation video ends here. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.